What's going on today, people? It's Young Base or TJG back again with another video. So I haven't posted a video in a while. I've been incredibly busy, but it just so happens that I have a, a free night tonight. And with the new Crowler event that's coming on right now, that's going on, I just I needed to talk about this because Ancient Gear is one of my favorite archetypes. And I, I used to run an Ancient Gear deck back when I played the TCG a little bit. I never played competitively, I only played for fun. But uh, Machines and Gears were always up there for my favorite cards. And Ancient Gear specifically, I had a badass deck. Now, um, getting into the cards that are specifically available in Duel Links, I'm going to go over every single one of the Ancient Gear cards. Then I'm going to talk about what the Ancient Gear decks are probably going to look like. And I'm going to show some cards that are probably going to be seen, maybe, in some of these Ancient Gear decks. I'm also, I first wanted to say before I get into all that, um, I'm so, I'm... I understand why they didn't put in Gear Town, but I wish that they did, because Gear Town would have really fucked some shit up. Like, imagine Toon Kingdom, but like, on, I wouldn't say on steroids, but like almost on steroids. Like, almost as good as Toon Kingdom, I would say. That's what I think, or, uh, that's what I think uh, Gear Town would have been like. So, getting into this, let's start with the very beginning in the alphabetical order. Uh, so, for all these, I've ranked them with a rank between 1 to 5, and I've written out the pros and cons for all of them. So starting with Ancient Gear, so it is a two-star Earth machine monster. All the monsters are Earth and they're all machines. So if you control an Ancient Gear, you can special summon this card from your hand and face up attack position. So this card is good because it can swarm the field. You have one of these, you normal summon. If you have two more in your hand, you can special summon both of them and it's great. Say you got a double summon, uh, you can instantly bring out an Ancient Gear Golem if you have that in your hand too. Uh, I mean, that'd be a five card hand, so you'd probably have to run dual standby. But I mean, you get the point. You have these Ancient Gears, you, uh, you have one, you'll have them all if they're all in your hand. It's not bad. Um, the con with it is that they have to be in your hand, which is the one thing, if it was from your deck or your hand, then this card would easily be a lot better, but from the hand, and additionally, they only have that 100 attack. So they're not as good as other cards. I only give them a two to a two and a half out of five, um, but they do work in some specific combos with some other cards. Oh, also, just so I say this now, there is going to be a follow-up video with actual specific replays. I just don't have all the cards yet. Um, since, I mean, this event started yesterday. Uh, next we have Ancient Gear Beast, which is a six star, uh, machine. It is an earth attribute, it's rare. So this card cannot be special summoned. If this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. Negate the effect of opponent's monster destroyed by battle with this card, including in the graveyard. So this card, uh, the pros for it, it's got a nice beefy 2000 attack and defense. So it's pretty good with that. It's only a single tribute, which isn't that bad for, uh... These kind of monsters and the effect is really nice that it negates um the effects of monsters in the graveyard and it has the anti-magic arrows effect in that your opponent cannot activate spell and trap cards until the end of the damage step once this card attacks the real con for it is that it can't be special summoned and that it does require that one tribute uh, it's better than having two tributes i would say but if this was like a 1800 with that effect right there maybe 2000 offense and four star it would easily be an ultra rare i think um moving on we have Ancient Gear Box, which you'll only get one of these with the current way that the game is set up. Uh, 500 attack, 2000 defense, uh, Earth Machine, as we know. Super rare, if this card is added from the deck or graveyard to your hand except by drawing it, you can add one Earth Machine type monster with 500 attack and or defense from your deck to your hand except Ancient Gear Box. You can only use this effect of Ancient Gear Box once per turn. So this card is good because it can search out specifically Ancient Gear Knight. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot of function for it because Earth Machine type monsters with 500 attack and or defense, they don't really fit that huge of a margin. The only other one really that I know of that I've actually keeping track of is Ancient Gear Cannon, but it's not even important to talk about that card. Um, so this card is pretty situational and you have to add it from your either hand or deck to your or graveyard to your hand. Um, and the only card that really does that out of all the other Ancient Gear cards is Workshop, which I will talk about later. Um, and it already has to be on the on the graveyard for that. So Ancient Gear Box, I think it's not that great of a card. Uh, I only give this card like a two and a half, maybe do a three. It's kind of situational. We're still missing some pieces for it, I think, for it to be as good as it can be. Um, I know that this is a standard card in Ancient Gear decks because there are some other Ancient Gear combo pieces that you want. Um, the only the, the other real problem is that it has to search out specifically cards with 500 attack and or defense so that is that is the little problem um and you only get to add them from your deck to your hand if it was a special summon of those cards then it'd be even better but ancient gearbox just i don't think it's cutting it right now the 2000 defense though is really nice for a four star monster 
Um, the only other card we have with that right now is, um, oh, I can't remember the card's name. That stone golem thing that Yugi Mo Mudo gives us. Anyway, moving on from Ancient Gear Box, two and a half to a three. Um, I consider Ancient Gear Cannon to be one of the worst uh, Ancient Gear cards out there. You can tribute this card and fuck 500 damage to your opponent, and if you do, neither player can activate trap cards during the battle phase of this turn. So, I mean, it's good in the sense that your opponent can't activate trap cards during the battle phase of this turn. However, if you're attacking with pretty much any other Ancient Gear monster, it's not going to be a thing because they all pretty much have the anti-magic arrows effect, and you have to already have this card normal summoned, and you have to tribute it, and it only inflicts 500 damage. So really, this card is not that good. I give it maybe like a 1 to it one and a half it's it's not anything you want to invest in ancient gear castle is definitely something you want to invest in so there is the middle age mech skill which um crowler gives us right now i hope i don't really know how to pronounce uh the dude's name but it doesn't really matter to me so this card is one of the uh, i think it's the only continuous spell that we actually have that's ancient gear so all ancient gear monsters gain 300 attack each time a monster is normal summoner set place one counter on this card if you tribute summon an ancient gear monster face up you can tribute this card instead if the number of its counters is equal to or greater than the number of required tribute so you set this thing turn one you normal summon a monster your opponent normal summons a monster your monster isn't destroyed or if this card isn't destroyed you can just next turn normal summon ancient gear golem straight up because this thing will have two counters on it or yeah and this card is just so good i have to give it a 4.5 maybe two of five it's so good um i would give it that because it gives a 300 attack bonus to all your ancient gear monsters um i actually have to check Okay, so it is all Ancient Gear monsters in general, so it's not just yours. So in the Ancient Gear versus Ancient Gear matchup, it can be a little iffy, but I don't really think that's going to be too big of an issue. Um, it gets counters on this card super easy because monsters being normal summoned, I mean, you get one of those every turn, so you're really going to be stacking up counters on this card, and it kind of gives your opponent a disincentive to normal summon things, or to set things even, so it is really nice with that. And uh, it easily tributes for Golem, or it tributes for Beast, or it tributes for Engineer, but don't tribute for Engineer. Um, the only real cons for this is that it takes a back row slot, which isn't too big of an issue since back row removal isn't that big of a thing right now. Mainly people are locking down set back rows or destroying set back rows, but I mean, if, if this is a face up card in your back row, it's probably not going to be destroyed right now. Um, the other thing is that we only really get two. We get one from leveling up Crowler and we get the other one from ancient or from middle age mech skill. So I mean, two is a good number for it. If we had three available, not even through the skill, it'd be a lot better. But I think with uh, having this number, I think is the most balanced way to do it. Um, I personally would say all Ancient Gear decks are going to run this. Uh, Ancient Gear Drill is kind of an interesting card. It has a very unique effect in that if you control an Ancient Gear monster, you can discard one card, set one spell card directly from your deck. This turn, that spell card cannot be activated. So this card is really only good for one specific combo in the Ancient Gear deck, which is activating Spell Gear, which I am going to get into later. But... Okay, so Spell Gear is pretty much the best card for all these spells besides Ancient Gear Castle. It's just so good for getting out um, golems. But Ancient Gear Drill, basically, you play this card, um, you discard one card, and then you set your Spell Gear. So this basically searches a Spell Gear for you, and it's one of the few ways... I can't really think of any other ways in which right now in Duel Links we can search Spell Cards. So, it is uh, one of the most reliable ways, and you can't use it this turn, but having it next turn is good, because maybe um, you have it in the back row and you don't have your golem yet, then when you draw your golem, your spell gear can activate. Everything will make sense uh, if you've read the spell geared card, or once I get to that point. Anyway, I'm going to move on from that. I give this card maybe a 2.5 to 3.5. I'm not sure yet, because I'm not really sure what other spell searching cards we have right now. Um... I'll get back to that though. So Ancient Gear Engineer is a unique card because it's a 5 star monster, it's got only 1500 attack and defense, but it's got a really good effect in that negate any trap cards or trap effects that target this card if you do destroy that trap card. So your opponent activates a mirror ball when you're swinging with this thing, mirror ball just gets destroyed immediately, so you want to attack with this thing first in that case. If this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. At the end of the damage step, if this card attacked, target one spell or trap card your opponent controls, destroy that target. This card has an amazing effect, it's absolutely incredible. The main problem with it is it only has 1500 attack and defense and it's a 5 star tribute monster. So I, it's, okay, this is why Gear Town is so good, because the card Gear Town, you basically get to summon uh, Ancient Gear monsters for one less tribute, and it's just so nice. Ancient Gear Engineer under that is just perfect. However, under this, having to tribute for is just really not that good, and this thing attacking is probably going to be destroyed since it has such low attack. The only real way this card works is if 
you have, well, uh, if you have a gravity blaster equipped to it and you're constantly stacking it up, or if your opponent just can't attack into this thing, or if you're boosting this thing's defense up and then you start attacking directly by some means, I don't know. There are ways to get around with Ancient Gear Engineer, but they're not the best methods. And for that, I gave it a one and a half to a two, really. There, I am assuming we'll get more support for this thing later on, but at this moment, I don't see this being a meta-defining card. Ancient Gear Explosive is an interesting card. I used to run this in my Ancient Gear deck, but my deck was not really competitive, and I really don't recommend that you run anything more than one of these. Because you get to target one Ancient Gear monster you control, destroy it, and if you do inflict damage to your opponent, equal to half its original attack. This card is good in certain combos, for example, say you have your golem out on the field, your opponent has low life points, you activate this thing, you blow them up. Say that doesn't kill them though, this thing's sent to the graveyard, or your golem sent to the graveyard, you activate your ancient gear workshop, get back your golem to your hand, then you activate a spell gear, and since you have an ancient gear golem in your hand, then it can work. That's pretty much like one of the few opportunities for this to work, but I don't know, uh, I haven't actually tested ancient gear explosive in this meta yet, so I don't know. For right now though, it really doesn't seem like it's going to be too good, so I only have to give it like a two to two and a half. The main problem is that you have to target and destroy one of your monsters. Uh, at least it doesn't inflict damage to both of you, like some other spell cards do, I'm sure. Uh, Ancient Gear Factory is an interesting card, uh, because you get to reveal one level five or higher Ancient Gear monster from your hand, and then you can banish Ancient Gear monsters from your graveyard whose combined level are double the revealed monsters, and then you can normal summon it without tributing. So say you have um, an Ancient Gear Golem in your hand, you play Ancient Gear Factory, if you have 16 er, uh, Ancient Gear monsters in your graveyard whose total level, I, I don't actually know what the reading or the ruling is, if it's exactly double or more than double, so you need at least 16 probably, uh, stars total, and then you can just straight up normal summon your golem without having to do that. The other problem is you have to banish all those cards from your graveyard, and if you're banishing like another golem, it's kind of problematic since we only get two. Um, this card isn't so good, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's good for a quote unquote easy uh, non tribute of a tribute monster. Uh, the other thing is you have to have exactly, I'm, I think it might be exactly double. I haven't tested it yet. Uh, I'm going to try and test it out, but I don't know when I'll find the time exactly to do that. Anyway, moving on, Ancient Gear Fist, one of the more interesting equipped cards. So equip this only to an Ancient Gear monster. At the end of the damage step, if the equipped monster battled a monster and is still in the field, destroy the monster it battled. So here's the thing with this. You, if you're going to play this card, you want to equip it to uh, some of your, I would say, slower monsters. So like your Ancient Gear Knights, your uh, soldiers, your engineers. You equip this to them. And if you can get your opponent's monsters into defense position, you attack, you'll take some battle damage, but you'll blow up your opponent's monster. So it is pretty nice. The other thing is, it does add an additional card that works for your spell gear. Um, so it does work in that regard. Otherwise, it does kind of waste a back row slot, and it's a little slow since it doesn't boost your monster's attack by any means. So I really can only give this thing a 2 to a 2.5. It's not much more than spell gear fodder, and there's easier ways to get around that. Ancient Gear Golem is the motherfucking best card ever! Look at this thing! Uh, I used to have... Uh, yeah, I had three of these, and they were like the only cards I had in uh, sleeves in my deck, so it just you could easily see which card was my Ancient Gear Golem just kind of sticking out, and I didn't realize that for a long time. This card is so good, it's got 3,000 3, attack and defense, cannot be special summoned. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage to your opponent. If this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. So this card is super nice. Um, you want to attack with this thing first if your opponent has a wall of disruption, that's going to be really good. Uh, inflicts piercing damage, which is also so nice, it's got the anti-magic arrow effect. Um, it's got such high attack, it's so good, it's got a great ability. The really biggest problems with it are that it can't be special summoned, it's an 8 star monster, so uh, 3 star demotion doesn't work for it unless you're tributing one monster, and the thing is that we only get two of these. Um, if we had three, it'd be a lot more consistent. But unfortunately, with only two, it is going to be a little bit more difficult. It also makes spell gear just that much more difficult to pull off as well. There are they could have made ancient gear broken in this meta, but I'm kind of glad they didn't because then people would complain so much. And I like it being balanced because then it's more fun and it means more to get out your golem, either one or two. I have to give this card a four to a four and a half. It's just so good. Speaking of four or four and a half, here's Ancient Gear Knight, which is one of the best other Ancient Gear cards. Uh, it's a Gemini monster, and when you normal summon it. Basically, it gets the your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. So it gets that nice anti-magic arrows effect. It's got knights, 1800 attack, 500 defense, so it can be searched with the Ancient Gear box. Um, it's 4 star, super rare. I really like this card. I mean, everyone likes this card. It's great. It's going to be a standard in all your Ancient Gear decks. Um, 
there's not much more you need to know to it other than, I mean, it has low defense, that's the biggest con, and it needs to be Gemini summoned. If it what, if it had that effect all the time, this would be, it'd probably still be a super rare, but it'd probably get a little more love to it as well. Ancient Gear Knight, definitely four to four and a half, it's going to be a staple in all your Ancient Gear decks. Pick up three of these things. Ancient Gear Soldier is kind of an interesting card because it's one of the few four star Ancient Gear monsters with a low 1300 attack and 1300 defense. And if this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell trap cards until the end of the damage step. So basically, it's like the same effect of Ancient Gear Knight, but it's got beefier defense and much lower attack. Um, this card isn't super good because of that really low attack and defense, and this game is just so. Uh, attack and defense oriented right now it's just so it's so powerful that the meta is so quick to have high attack and people can swarm the field with so many high attack monsters so quick this card is just too slow to do anything and it's really nothing more than spell gear fodder and even then it's not even good spell gear fodder so i have to give this thing like a, like a two i'm yeah if it could have been better but it's not uh inching your tank this is the one way that you can really make uh your Ancient Gear Soldier is good is if you equip it with an Ancient Gear tank. So equip this only to an Ancient Gear monster, it gains 600 attack. Bam, right there, so good. And if you've got your Ancient Gear castle out on the field, that's a 900 attack bonus to any Ancient Gear monster with those two on there. Uh, and it, when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, it inflicts 600 damage to your opponent. The biggest problem with this is that it does take up a uh, back row slot, which is kind of unfortunate. Also, the design is pretty cool. I mean, just look at that thing. It's a cool ass tank. Uh, it does inflict an effect damage to your opponent when it's destroyed, so that is pretty nice. And a uh, 600 attack bonus onto your Ancient Gear monster is really good as well. And it's a spell gear fodder. Like, you can use this for the, your spell gear. So you, pretty much, you could have this card uh, equipped to a monster on the field and you have Ancient Gear Castle. You scrap all those three with spell gear and you get both your golems out on the field. You could get that easy turn one. It's it's incredible. Uh, yeah, I'm, like I was saying, the only uh, con for this thing is that it takes up a back row slot. I have to give this a 3.5 to a 4. I think it's pretty nice. Uh, moving on, sorry I keep swiping wrong, Ancient Gear Workshop, target one Ancient Gear monster in your graveyard, add the target to your hand. It's simple, it's easy. If this was added from your deck to your hand, then this card would be easily a 5, but since it's from the graveyard to the hand, I have to give this thing a 3.5 to a 4 really, because you already have to have them in the graveyard. But it is a good way to get your golems back, especially if either you destroy them and then you can activate spell gear once it's already been played. Uh, it's probably going to be standard to have at least one of these in your Ancient Gear decks, but I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on that part yet. I'm not 100% sure so far. The other thing is, I was thinking about what uh, ability or what skills would be good for Ancient Gear cards. Um, I've been bouncing around. I think Middle Age Max is probably going to be one of the most standard uh, cards for it. This is it's kind of like Ojama Country, where pretty much everyone run. Well, you have to run that for your Ojama decks. Um, Another ability I think would, that would be good is Destiny Draw, but one other good one is Last Gamble, because if you send your Ancient Gear Golem to the graveyard and you pick up an Ancient Gear Workshop, you just pick up that boy, that bad boy right again, and then you can activate your spell gear. It's an option, I think. I don't know how good it's going to be. I still have to test everything. I still don't have all the cards for it to work yet. So yeah, as I was saying, 3.5 to 4. Now we get to the piece de resistance of all the Ancient Gear cards besides Ancient Gear Golem. We have Spell Gear. I was so sure they weren't going to add this card and Ancient Gear was just going to suck. But... They have spell gear. Send three ancient gear cards you control to the graveyard. You can special summon up to one ancient gear golems from your hand and one from your deck, in ignoring the summoning conditions. Then destroy all monsters you control except ancient gear golems. You cannot normal summon or set until the end of your next turn. Let's talk about why this card is nuts. You have, from the skill Middle Age Max, you have an ancient gear castle from the beginning. You need to draw two more ancient gear cards. If one of them is a monster, and one of them is an equip spell, you have those on the field. If you have a set card, I'm pretty sure it counts for that. You have a set Ancient Gear Workshop, you special, or your normal summon, your uh, Ancient Gear uh, Knight, or whatever, or what is it called? Yeah, it's Knight. Um, you, have an, you have an Ancient Gear Golem in your hand, that's all you need. You spell gear it up, you, nor or you special summon your uh, Golem, you special summon one from the deck, doesn't matter you don't have any other cards uh set you're gonna want back row because those things are gonna get picked up so easy but spell gear is such an easy way for you to get golems on the field and it is it's like in the tcg this card was, i i if i'm remembering cor correctly because this was a long time ago this card was bananas uh i remember pulling off some crazy stunts i only had one of these which does kind of mimic the um dueling sm uh, vibe since we're only getting one um, this card is just so good and i'm gonna tell you guys like you're gonna want this in all your ancient gear decks you're definitely gonna want to grind uh, what's his face up so you can get three. Wait, how to obtain? Does it say if there's any ways to get it other than 
Sorry, um, I want to see if it says if there's any other ways to get this other than level up reward. And I don't know why it's taking so long. Let me turn off the Wi-Fi. Because that'll make everything go a lot quicker. How's everyone doing? Give me, uh, leave in the comments down below what you think of all the Ancient Gear cards. And, yeah, I'd love to hear what everyone else's opinions are. I know a lot of people in my Discord. Come join my Discord. A lot of people in my Discord were talking about how excited they were for it. Yeah, it's just a level up reward. Sorry for that little intermission right there, but... Spell Gear, you are going to want to pick it up. Really, the only cons for it are that we only have one from Crawler at 40, and that you get you have to destroy any other monsters that you control, plus you can't normal summon or... Or set, yes. You can't normal summon or set until the end of your next turn. So you're kind of stuck with these two, or these one or two Ancient Gear Golems on your side of the field. Which is not a problem, since those cards are super, super cool. Yeah, that's... I have to give this card a four to a five, maybe. Somewhere in that range. Maybe a four and a half. Um, so that's all I have to say about these Ancient Gear cards. Let's take one second, and I want to just... Oh, also, how cool is it that Crowler gives us a beatdown? I'm so happy about that. Um, I think it's... Is it this one? No, that's me just uh, looking at all the Ancient Gear cards I had. Yeah, so these are a small list of all the cards I think are going to be really good in Ancient Gear decks that aren't Ancient Gear monsters. Some of these are going to look a little weird, but I'm going to explain them. So you've got your Mecha Phantom Beast Hamstrat. This card is really good because it gives you those two tokens once it's flipped, and you can use those to normal sum or tribute summon your Ancient Gear Golem. You've got your Sergeant Electro, which is another machine type. It's locking down the back row, so your opponent can't Econ take once you have... Um, an Ancient Gear Golem on the side of the field unless you spell geared it out. Uh, plus, Sergeant Electro is really good uh, because it's a machine type, and other machine type uh, cards for this are going to be Gravity Blaster, which is okay, but I'm not really sure yet since it's not an Ancient Gear equip card. It kind of messes with spell gear, and a rare Metal Morph, which is pretty nice for um, blocking spell effects, so one time only your Ancient Gear Golem isn't going to be econ taken, and it boosts them by 500 attack, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, Sergeant Electro, I'm not sure if it's going to be meta with them, since they do have the anti-magic arrow effect, but it is going to be pretty nice, I think. Doesn't he hear Diamond Dude? Uh, I only mention this card because if you Diamond Dude out your spell gear, it's going to affect the next turn, and if you have, um, your Ancient Gear Golem in hand, there you go. Like, it, it's perfect. Uh, I haven't played a Diamond Dude deck, so I re wouldn't really know anything about them. I also only have one of them, so, like, it doesn't matter. Trojan Horse, I only mention... Uh, because you've set this card, so you've got an Ancient Gear Golem in hand. You've got a Windstorm in the back. Your opponent summons a monster. They try to attack you. Windstorm. Next turn, tribute summon this thing. And then, bam, you're good. Uh, Trojan Horse is done. Soul Exchange. You've got a monster in the field. You've got a Soul Exchange. You've got a uh, Ancient Gear Golem. You Soul Exchange it up. Destroy your opponent's monster. Or tribute your opponent's monster if it can be targeted. And you target or you tribute your monster. There you go. You got yourself an ancient gear golem. It's pretty nice. Soul exchange is good like that. Gravity blaster is good because you can start boosting up your monsters. Say so you've got your soldiers, you've got your engineers. These things start boosting up. Your opponent will eventually not be able to swing over them. Um, and also, whoops. Once you have gravity blaster on the field, uh, your opponent's monsters effect is negated. So you're shutting down their back row and you're shutting down their opponent's monsters effect. Gravity blaster with that is just so nice. Uh, Mausoleum of the Emperor. So if you're running a Destiny Draw kind of deck, so I don't know if you guys know uh, the um, Mausoleum of the Emperor plus plus uh, um, what's his face? Um, Invader of Darkness. That was a pretty meta deck for a while. So you don't have searchers like Doomdog Octhrus for uh, Invader of Darkness, but Mausoleum of the Emperor is a good way to get out your Ancient Gear Golems by paying 2,000 life points. It is one way to do it, and I think it is a pretty good option. I'm not sure if it's going to be a meta option, but it's just another way. I'm definitely going to be testing this once I get my second Ancient Gear Golem. Uh, Stray Lambs is another way to do it, so you set your Ancient Gear Golem, and it's got that nice 3,000 defense. Your opponent really isn't going to be destroying it uh, this turn. I am probably going to try and pick up another one of these, because I feel like two Stray Lambs is going to be really nice for getting out Ancient Gear Golem. Enemy Controller is really good, because you Econ take your opponent's monsters, um, additionally, Dakini is still going to be a thing, and if it boosts up with Ida-10, you're going to want to activate enemy controller if they activate their effect, etc. You know the whole deal for enemy controller. Floodgate Trap Hole is great for getting rid of uh, your opponent's monsters. If they have anything that can get over Ancient Gear Golem, you Floodgate that shit. Like, get that out of here. Uh, you've got your Blue Eyes Red Dragon. You don't have a Champion's Vigilance anymore. You're getting Floodgated. Um, 
Wall of Disruption is really good just because you have your low attack Ancient Gear monsters if your opponent's trying to swing over them with more floor, uh, flooding the board kind of decks. So Red Eyes decks and um, Cyber Angels decks, things like that. You Wall of Disruption them and then they won't be able to get over your Ancient Gear monsters despite the fact that they might have a low attack. And I already talked about Rare Metal Morph. I think it's going to be really good with this. Um, and I realize I've been talking for about a half hour now almost, so I want to end the video here. That's really all I got to say about these Ancient Gear cards for now because I haven't tested them out yet. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, please like, share, subscribe, etc. I'm going to have a follow-up video not uh, as soon as I get Crowler to 40, which I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to power level this dude up. So trust me, it will be soon, but it's not as soon as I would like. I am going to a conference next week and I'm going to be gone for almost the entire week. And I'm presenting at that conference, so it's going to be a lot of my time. So I'm probably not going to have another video up until I get back from that. So please leave any comments down below. Maybe I missed something. Maybe you think I'm a total idiot and I'm wrong about something. Maybe you think I'm totally right and you just want to say thank you, Base Lord TJG, for all your wisdom. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy. And yeah.